for some days already I wanted to make this video about some kind of things that I really don't like, especially with open source projects. So, so this is a Lenovo T470S that uh, I got for some weeks here for testing. And this is a portable SSD that you've seen in other videos that I use for work and testing videos. So for the last decade I was a huge fan of Grub1, what is now called Grub Legacy. And I still kept using it until last year, because why actually change the running system? Only now that I wanted to use full disk encryption, I actually changed to Grub2. Initially I thought Grub2 is a little bit like an own operating system, like Emacs, you know, with, with Morse code, beeping and, and whatnot. But for better FS and um, disk encryption, it is obviously the way to go. One thing that particularly annoyed me um, since months is, when you look on the config, we load you some encryption modules. Also, why did, why did they have to name it Vian Dale? Uh, why not AES, which is a name people know this. But the thing is really annoying. Normally you would access your disks by this UUID, that when you move them around they are still found. For example, not each system may show this portable SSD as first disk or second disk. So obviously it's much more convenient to automatically find it by UUID. And what I was wondering for months is why it doesn't work with this Luke's full disk encryption. Normally you would search, set a variable like root, skip floppies, no floppies, and fsuuid, the one we are looking for. And this works with normal disks and file systems, but not with encryption. First I just used this with fixed disks and had to change it on every other system to boot. And last week I finally researched this and it turns out that they simply did not wrote the UUID um, hook for uh, Luke's. So this is why it doesn't work with this full disk encryption. And then only reading the source code I found out that the script to mount, to mount this Luke's volume has a U argument for the UUID. And this also first didn't work when I put here the variable name like UUID. Normally you would expect that this to work, but this also didn't work. And I do not always have the time to read the source code for all, so I again also left this in peace for some week or two until I took another look and it turns out the UUID parsing of crypto mount does not parse the UIDs with the dashes there. So in the variable there we have like dash here and so on. So you can't use dashes here. The tools normally used to make it a little bit more readable. I really find this very silly. Seriously, why could they not program it the right way the first time? Someone custom coded here some things to get it working, but it does neither support the search by UUID for Luke's volumes, nor does it support UUIDs with dashes. And this kind of things really drive people crazy. So for six months, of course I could have researched it earlier, but I have also other things to do. So for six months I did not have this automatic UUID mounting, simply because it didn't work out of the box. And the things are so arbitrarily unimplemented or buggy. This are this kind of things that I really don't like. Of course it's free. I did not pay a single cent. I can use it myself. But when I write something like an exact image or wherever, even in the SANE scanner driver, or if I contribute something to the Linux kernel, I write it so that it fits into the framework and works. And um, so this is release candidate 2, as you see. There is a new release out. I've not yet checked if it works in that one. Today I mostly wanted to point out that, especially in the open source world, things really should be programmed to just work and not like in Windows where everything is strange and nothing makes sense. At least in the open source world things should make sense and should just work and things should not arbitrarily break with special options and dashes and this is really... And this is also wasting people's time. All the other IT experts and me, we spend hours reading manuals and trying and, and reading source code and figuring it out. Sometimes I even have to go as far as put some debug printouts in there to understand what's going on. And in the kernel and bootloader, of course, debugging around is not the most easy thing to do. And especially in these areas, things really should just work. And especially like Grub2 has so many trillion features, maybe the really base stuff should really be working like this full disk encryption. So if you're an open source developer, really double check how you implement things, that they really work well in the surrounding frameworks and notations. And I hope you found this video interesting and you learned something and see you next time.